have swallowed all manner of poisonous certainties fed us by our parents and school teachers. If the race is to be freed from its crippling burden of good and evil, it must be psychiatrists who take the original responsibility. Заявление Брока Чисхолма определило характер атаки психиатров на нашу школьную систему. В 1950 году психиатры и психологи со всего мира собрались в Белом доме с предложением полностью переориентировать школьную систему. Uh, institutions of learning. In the early 60s, the world of psychiatry started to really go places in this country, little by little. It came into our schools, our educational system. И к 1965 году это приобрело форму закона. Психиатры получили добро на массовое диагностирование школьников и пичкание их препаратами. A child is labeled ADD or ADHD the minute he can't uh, sit still for a uh, 10-15 minute period of time, uh, or he talks constantly or ignores the teacher completely. That will get him and earn him an ADD or ADHD label. Постановка диагноза «синдром дефицита внимания и гиперактивности» СДВГ пошла полным ходом в 1987 году. Всего за один год диагноз СДВГ был поставлен полумиллиону американских детей. К 1997 году это число выросло почти до 4,5 миллионов. В ответ на тревогу общественности по поводу этой эпидемии, Национальные институты здоровья, финансируемые правительством США, созвали комиссию из видных врачей и психиатров, чтобы разъяснить родителям и педагогам, что такое СДВГ. There, I mean, I think the panel has been frank, and you know the difficulties here are immense in terms of of uh, um, these. I mean, <clears throat> uh, it is hard. It's, it's very hard to know how to answer this question. There, um, they cannot. You know, even when. Um, uh, They are as if driven by a motor. There are some good clinical descriptions. Um, and I think, you know, we, uh, I, I do, I think the pro part of the problem is the profession keeps changing the diagnosis. At this time, we do not have a diagnostic test for ADHD. Therefore, the validity of the disorder continues to be a problem. Однако это шокирующее признание не остановило школьных психиатров. Два года спустя число американских школьников с диагнозом СДВГ достигло отметки 6 миллионов. Сегодня 20 миллионов детей в мире имеют тот или иной психиатрический диагноз. Зачастую постановка диагноза занимает всего несколько минут. We would then look at um, the child. We would like do small manipulative activities with them to see where their deficit was. Um, it was wrong what we were doing. We were looking at a five-minute glimpse of this child's life and saying, "Okay, here you go. Here's a little pill. Take it. You'll be fine." Эти маленькие таблеточки вроде риталина, адерала и концерты отнесены управлением по борьбе с наркотиками США категории веществ, вызывающих наркотическую зависимость вместе с кокаином и метамфетамином. Когда я был на Ritalin, это 
feel like totally different, like I wasn't even who I was. I was, you know, flipping out, twitching, you know, going crazy. I felt like I was out of it all the time, like I wasn't there, I wasn't human. You're just a zombie, pretty much not, you, you, you know, you do what you can just to get by and just don't do anything extra. My mother never teased me, but she thought I really had ADHD and I was wrong, and I had something wrong with me. So I thought she'd feel bad and feel sorry for me if I died. But then again, I, I thought that she um, would miss me a lot. And I also love her um, a little more than I wanted to kill myself. And so I stopped, I stopped when I realized that. Обилие назначенных по рецепту препаратов дало детям новый источник дохода. Они продают свои таблетки школьным товарищам. It's called Kitty Cocaine. They take the Ritalin and they just repackage it and they sell it on campus to the kids because it's like speed. I figured like, if I was going to do drugs, I might as well make it worth it. And I ended up doing street drugs and then I ended up getting into it really bad. We're looking at um, marijuana and other things as being gateway drugs. And actually, the, the so-called medications are a greater gateway drug. The Ritalin drugs are backfiring big time because if the child is already disruptive and he takes cocaine, he's going to be a lot more disruptive after he's taken it. It is not going to calm him down. Boom, she got on the drugs and her personality changed, her behaviors changed, it became erratic and dark and violent and uh, it, it was just a nightmare. He kept having adverse reactions, becoming very, very angry. He could not control his behavior. He couldn't control his temper. He was on five different psych meds, Prozac and um, lithium, and um, he was seven years old. And he was unable to function. He would have rages and then crying and, and all kinds of um, just violent rages, grabbing knives and all of this. <laughs> The list includes 15-year-old Kip Kinkle withdrawing from Prozac when he shot 22 classmates, killing two after murdering his mother and stepfather at his home in Springfield, Oregon. 18-year-old Jason Hoffman on Effexor and Selexa when he opened fire at his California high school, wounding five. 15-year-old Sean Cooper on a mix of antidepressants when he shot students in Idaho. And 17-year-old Eric Harris on Luvox when he and partner Dylan Klebold killed 12 classmates and a teacher in the bloodiest school massacre yet, Columbine. За этим вообще теряется изначальная цель, ради которой дети ходят в школу – получение образования. С 70-го года Америка опустилась по академической успеваемости с 9-го места в мире на 26-е. За тот же период стремительно выросло число американских школьников с диагнозом «учебное расстройство». А продажи препаратов от СДВГ увеличились в 118 раз. So you ask to ask the classic Roman question, legal question, cui bono, who benefits? The people who make the diagnosis.